It's important to keep in mind that fiction isn't always realistic, especially when it comes to shonen battle manga. However, this isn't gonna prevent me from overanalyzing the media I consume. So in this video I'm gonna take a look at My Hero Academia through the lens of molecular biology, explore some interesting ideas and hopefully explain some of the basic principles along the way. To prevent myself from going on even more tangents than I already do, I'm gonna focus on a single question for this video. How is Endeavor able to withstand the heat he generates by using his work, Hellflame? When thinking of extreme heat, there's only really one place to head to. Volcanoes. More specifically, geothermal springs and deep sea geothermal vents. The hot water they emit attracts a certain type of organism. Thermophiles. Mostly made up of archaea, which is the third and mostly forgotten domain of life, next to bacteria and eukarya. Thermophiles thrive at high temperatures, so their proteins can withstand extreme heat. Quick side note on proteins, they fulfill a plethora of different functions in the body. Some inform others, make cells move, again others catalyze certain reactions. All proteins are basically a long string consisting of a sequence of different amino acids. Based on this sequence, the string then arranges itself in a complex structure due to tiny intramolecular interactions between the amino acids. This structure then allows the protein to perform its function. Sequence determines structure, structure determines function. When heated up, the intramolecular interactions get broken up since they're really weak. The structure falls apart and the function is lost. This phenomenon is called denaturation, and for human proteins, it happens at about 40 degrees Celsius. But for these certain archaea, it only starts happening at about 150 degrees Celsius. So, how does this fit into the original question? Well, it's complicated. On one hand, if his quirk also makes the proteins able to withstand the heat, like those thermophile archaea, that would work from a heat point of view. On the other hand, life forms living in geothermal vents are probably the closest thing to first life on Earth, meaning there's about 3.7 trillion years of good old evolution between them and humans. When keeping in mind that humans and chimps had their last common ancestor about 5 million years ago, that's quite a long time. Humans are just more complicated and have way more different genes, proteins and cell types than archaea. TLDR, the core idea makes sense. Life can exist at high temperatures, but it doesn't quite translate to humans. So. 
For the next point, let's just assume that endeavor cells are just built different and can work under normal temperatures as well as extreme heat. What could cause the overheating side effects he experiences in the show? There are three possible explanations I can think of. The first and probably most boring of the three is that his cells just have another limit. Instead of denaturing at 40 degrees, Endeavor's proteins start at a way higher threshold, which he crosses after prolonged use of his work. One could probably do some convoluted calculations to determine that limit, but thermodynamics isn't really my forte, so I'm gonna pass. Usually, the speed of chemical reactions increases as the temperature does, but in cells, almost every reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme. And once the denaturation starts occurring, the reaction speed decreases dramatically due to the proteins losing their structure and function. The decreased reaction speed would cause effects that are rather similar to the ones that he experiences in the show, namely exhaustion due to slower metabolism. Luckily, protein denaturation in the human body is reversible, at least to a certain extent. So, once he cools down, his proteins would rearrange in their functional structure. Before we get to the second potential explanation, in the gastrointestinal tract of a healthy human, there are about 300 to 1000 different species of bacteria living in a mutually beneficial relationship, a symbiosis. The bacteria receive nutrients and a safe place to form colonies because they're not getting targeted by the immune system. Humans, in turn, get access to various bacterial enzymes which right now more complex carbohydrates like cellulose, which humans can't metabolize without these enzymes. In addition to that, gut microbiota plays a pivotal role in the immune system by making it more difficult for pathogens to grow in the gut. Now what would happen if Endeavor's body were to heat up? Under the assumption that he himself can handle the heat, he'd be fine, obviously, but that wouldn't apply to his microbiota. Bacteria also have a temperature limit at which their proteins denature. I couldn't actually find any papers on fever-associated damage to the gut microbiota, so I don't have a specific number, and it's gonna vary widely from species to species. Most of his gut microbiota would be wiped out each time he eats up. Since this situation is pretty similar to the microbiota being wiped out by prolonged antibiotic treatment, we could expect similar symptoms, most notably a drastically increased likelihood of bowel infections. 
Unfortunately, that doesn't quite fit the bill, so let's take a look at another possible explanation. If you've been on the internet for long enough, you might know that mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Well, that fact is pivotal for the third hypothesis for the cause of endeavors overheating. There are two main pathways used to generate energy in the form of ATP from glucose, anaerobe glycolysis and aerobe respiration. Glycolysis happens in the cell plasma and only generates 2 ATP per molecule of glucose. Respiration can only take place in the mitochondria, but it has a way higher energy yield at 36 ATP per molecule of glucose. What's interesting for us here is that mitochondria have a separate set of DNA from the human cell. Each mitochondrion is basically a separate organism. What would happen if we never were to eat up would be pretty similar to what I mentioned with microbiota before. Since we're still assuming that the cells are just able to tolerate the heat, they survive, but the mitochondria's proteins would start denaturing and aerobe respiration would stop. It generates less energy overall resulting in exhaustion, which is exactly the side effect we see him experience in the show. This is my head, kind of low. Do with this information as you please. That's it for me for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.